Well guys, I know a lot of you Panther platform fellows have been waiting for this for a long time. Today, we're swapping out the rear diff in old grandma. Before we do that though, there's a couple of things that I want to experiment with. One of those is being how fast the engine actually turns over at different speeds on this car. So what we're going to do is we're going to go grab our OBD2 scan tool, hook it up to grandma and we'll hit the highway and see just how much RPM this engine turns stock with the 273 gears that came stock on this car. So. I'm gonna head out there, I'm gonna grab some coffee, we're gonna hit the road, we'll do a few little experimentals, then we're gonna dive right in to getting this rear end swapped out. Hi, this is Corey, may I take the order please? Can I get a medium coffee with just milk and a sausage breakfast sandwich please? Did you want a hash brown like that combo? No thanks. Okay, yeah, that's gonna be 615 and Becca will have ready to hit the window. Thank you. So one thing I did forget was to pick up some differential fluid and the uh, traction modifier. So I'm going to run in there to CarQuest and grab that. I'll be right back. So now that we've got that, let's go get our scan tool and hit the road. So as you can see, we got the scan tool all hooked up and uh, this car seems to be idling right around 640, 650. So let's get it out on the road and see where she's going to idle at 30 miles an hour, at 50 miles an hour, and at 70. So there's 30 miles an hour and it's idling at about 1200. We're at 50 miles an hour, and it's about 1250-ish. And at 70, she's hovering right around 1700. So I figured while we're out here on the road, we might as well do a quick zero to 60. Now we've done this before on Grandma, but we're gonna use this new app that, uh, you know, I know these apps aren't 100%, but we're gonna use it as a baseline for these 273 gears in Grandma, and then once we get the new rear end put in, we'll come back and we'll do the test over again and compare the two. So, we're ready, we're on the shoulder of the road here, let's do a zero to 60. According to the app, it says we did zero to 60 in eight seconds flat. We're gonna use that as our baseline. Now we're gonna go back to the shop, get it swapped out, and we'll test her again. Okay, so we've got grandma in here up on the hoist, and I can't help it, but every time grandma gets up on a hoist and I lift it just so the wheels are barely off the ground, I, I don't know, I can't help but think I want one of these things with a three inch lift and great big tires on it. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comment section below. So the biggest problem that I'm having right now because I'm here by myself, is figuring out how to get that rear diff out here by myself without destroying either A, my back, or damaging something else along the way. So I think what I'm going to do is probably grab the floor jack and we'll weasel it around through the outside door. We 
might be able to do this. Might. There goes my pants. Well, it's in here, and I only got a little bit of grease on my pants. So, let's get the car up in the air. Start taking things apart. Whew. So first thing we got to do is we got to get these rear wheels and tires off and then uh, we'll get it up a little bit higher, we'll drain the fluid out of it and we'll start working away at getting the axles out and getting the brakes tore apart, all that good stuff. And then we're going to swap over all the parts from this axle, like the backing plates, over to the new axle and then we can start putting it together. So rather than do a step by step, it's pretty basic stuff, we're going to put it to a time lapse. So if you recall when we had this vehicle up in the air in one of my last episodes where we kind of did the inspection on the car. You'll remember that we have a couple of leaky shocks so we're going to replace those shocks today while we're here and we're inspecting the brakes and all the brakes look good. We're going to service them obviously we have them apart in hopes that everything comes apart easily. All these bolts and stuff like that I've got them all sprayed down with some penetrating fluid. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get to the um, drive shaft we'll get that out then we'll get the shocks and then we'll start with the four link and start dropping it down from there but before any of that we're going to drain the fluid out of the differential and get that done first okay so i got off on a little bit of a tangent there working away and forgetting to press record but let me catch up speed to where we are took the back cover off we got the fluid drained we've also got the the uh, drive shaft uh, disconnected from it as well and unlike the new differential a little bolt that holds the pinion what a shaft, I guess they call it, into place, has the head is stripped a little bit. Someone has been in here before at some point in time, and uh, it's getting quite difficult to get that uh, pinion bolt uh, out. So what we're going to have to do is I'm going to leave it till we get down on the ground where it's a little bit easier to work on. For now, we're getting ready to remove the shocks, the watts link bars, as well as the control arms. The springs will likely fall out of place and then we've just got a few connections like the ABS sensors and the emergency brake and the brake lines. We should be able to pop this thing off. So what we're going to do next is we're going to get the shocks disconnected. We're going to uh, disconnect the calipers and let them hang up there and uh, then we're going to start taking everything apart. So again, like I said, we'll do this to a little bit of music. Okay, so now you're probably asking, how far along are we? There's only one thing connecting this differential to the car, and that is this emergency brake cable. There's lots of slack in it so that we can lower down the axle and uh, still kind of work away at it once we get these brakes out of the way. But one thing I wanted to point out was the ABS sensors. I was worried about whether or not I was going to have to beat them out by doing the same way that we did on the old ones. But the difference in this axle and this car versus that one is this one was in much better shape, much cleaner, and not as much rust. So basically all I did was I sprayed some penetrating oil around the inside and outside and a couple of taps with the uh, hammer and the uh, ABS sensors came right out. So those aren't attached anymore. We're getting ready to drop this down, so let's do it.
So right now we are down as far as this jack will get us. We're at a point where we're going to have to support it a little bit, keep it from flopping back and forth so that we can work on getting these axles out and figure out what we're going to do with that, uh, with that pinion shaft bolt. Still haven't done anything with that yet. So after messing around a little bit trying to figure out uh, how to get this pinion shaft bolt out, this is what I found out. I didn't have any extraction tools and uh, I went to even YouTube to figure out some hints. I couldn't really find anything based on the tools that I had at play. So here's what I did. I basically came in with my hammer and I <laughs> pounded back on the bolt to round or to kind of mushroom the end of that head back. That way when I put my eight millimeter on it, I've got to force it on there. So what I did was I pounded the eight millimeter on with a hammer and then I was able to start rotating that back and that's what it took to get this bolt out so now i can finish up getting that bolt out we'll pull the axles we'll get the backing plate switched over to the new axle and then we can start the reassembly process of this new 8.8 .8 with the 327 gears so all we got to do now is we've got to get this pinion shaft out and once that bolt is out it just slides out just like the other one before And then if I rotate this back, you'll be able to see the axles when I push them in. And then that releases our keys that with a little bit of finesse should just pop it out of there. Just like that for the passenger side we'll do the same for the driver's side we'll haul these axles out and that significantly lighten the load and the balance so i gotta sneak over to the other side without losing it And now we can start working away at getting these brakes apart and getting the backing plates off because we're going to switch the backing plates to the new axle. And by the looks of everything in here, all the brake pads look good. All the hardware and the self-adjuster is working just fine. So we may even be able to use all this stuff over again and not have to worry about replacing it. Now one thing that we did notice when we were working away uh, at doing the inspection on this was that the pinion seal was leaking. but if we come over to the axles, the axle seals weren't leaking, but it was just a matter of time because the, uh, the actual seal itself was starting to uh, crack and break. So I guess we caught this just in time. Let's, uh, let's start getting things swapped over. We gotta start taking things apart right here. So one of the things that's gonna make this super easy to do, uh, and we don't even have to tear apart the brakes on it, and I'll show you why. This bracket comes off. If we knock out these four bolts, everything is tied together. The backing plate is attached to this bracket for your caliper, and all of the hardware for your brakes is attached to it. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take these four bolts off here, and we'll just take them over and put them on the new axle. Those ones there will knock off just as easy. In fact, I think I've got one of them. Yeah, this one here is already loose. All right, so now that we're done with this old axle, we can get it off the transmission jack and we'll have to figure out some way to get this one up on it, probably with a little bit of help. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get ready to get the new differential ready for the axles to go back in. Don't forget, we did replace the axle seals here. Before you put the axles back in, take a little bit of grease and just you know put it around that rubber. That way the rubber doesn't dry out from the outside like it looked like these ones did, and it should prolong those for a little while longer. We've got to get the watts link off of this one because we left the old one up there, and then we can start kind of manhandling things, getting it back into place. So before we do that, let's get the old watts link off, 
We'll get ready to start putting the axles back on. Then we'll fill it full of gear oil with the additive and then we're ready to stuff her back into place. All right, so I've got the new axle assembly all put back together, getting ready to put it up. I've got the cover on it, the fluids in it, as well as the friction modifier. I had to recruit Junior here to give me a hand lifting this one down on the floor and then putting this one back up on the jack. And having a couple extra hands is going to make it a little easier kind of maneuvering things up into place. So we're going to get started doing that. So uh, let's get at her. Okay, so with an extra set of hands, it didn't take very long at all. We've got this thing in here. It's hooked up on all five points. So the two control arms and the watch link is installed and it's just kind of hanging there by itself. So what we've got to do now is we've got to hook up the drive shaft. We've got to put the new shocks on, put the brakes back together. But before we do the brakes, I've got to get that emergency brake uh, fixed up and connected again on the inside. Other than that, we're in the home stretch. So uh, I'm going to put all this stuff back together, and when I come back to it, we will be getting ready to take this for a drive. All right, so we've got this side all buttoned up. The uh, parking brake and the brakes and all that stuff have been serviced. We got that all put back together. And we come over to this side. We got the parking brake. We've got the, uh, just going to put the drum back on it and service the brakes on this side, get the wheel on it, and we are 100% done. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to put this back together, then we're going to take it for a spin. Turn the track and control off there. Let's try her again. Are you ready now? Hard to tell for sure on these wet uh, on this wet parking lot, but what we're gonna do is uh, hook up the computer, get back on the highway check out our 0 to 60 and our RPMs and uh, done deal. All right, we are done and we're getting ready to head out on a quick test drive to see how this thing works. And we've got the RPMs up there running right around 640. So we're gonna hit the road. We're gonna do 30, 50 and 70 miles an hour and see what the difference is in the RPMs. So there's 30. We're at about 1,200, get up to 50 here. About 1,250, now we'll jump up to 70 real quick. So there's 70 and we're at about 1,750-ish. Uh, so quite comparable to the other gears. Now let's get it out on the highway and do a quick zero to 60. Hopefully we can keep it on the road because it's well trying to rain and the roads are a little wetter now than they were when we first started. Don't mind the wipers. So we've got our zero to 60 going here and we're gonna hit start. That didn't take us very long. That didn't take us very long to get there, but we gotta pull over so we can see exactly. Well, that felt a lot quicker because I lost the phone somewhere. So a quick 
according to that, it says 6.95. So, did we really gain a full second just by doing a gear swap from 273 to 327? I don't know. I think what we'll do is we'll end up having to wait until we get a nice dry day and do a little comparison based on what we did before. So I'm not sure if you guys are noticing or not, but the engine sound sounds like it's getting a little more RPM on that top end before the shift. So it sounds meaner, it feels quicker. Now whether it is or not, I don't know, but I'm feeling pretty good about this rear end. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we don't lose too much on the fuel economy, but that's to be seen. So that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, we will be having a lot more fun with this car. We are basically ready at this point for a tune from Moe's Speed Shop. So hopefully sometime over the winter we will get that done, depending on what the exchange rate is on the Canadian money, because uh, Mo wants 500 bucks American, and that's like 700 and change Canadian. So maybe we'll see if we can get a little bit of a deal with the exchange rate, but nevertheless, that's going to do it for this episode. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you. God bless. Let's do it again real soon. Different speeds on this car. So what we're going to do is we're going to go grab our uh, OBD2 card reader. Not card reader. It's not an SD card. With the three... Not the 327s. That's what we're putting into it. Springs are basically just set in there, so they should hold themselves. Uh, or springs don't hold themselves in place. Unless at least not when the axles there. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get ready to put the axles back in to the new axle. Get the axles put back into the new axle. No differential. And we will likely fill it full of the uh, gear oil. Come on. Uh, anyways, that's going to do it. Let's, uh, let's end this video maybe. I don't know. So I guess that's going to do it for this video. I have... Uh, What I have. I have an absent mind is what I have. I think I forgot about you again. It's starting to rainy.